Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Happy Saturday. I hope you're having a great weekend so far. Thanks for sticking with me. Even though my videos have been sparse lately, I'm down to like one a week, and that's not where I want to be, but you know, unfortunately, that's how life is sometimes. So, that being said, today we're going to talk about something, and I'm going to show you something that is on everybody's mind right now. It's on everybody's tongue. Everybody's talking about it, and that is Nix. Not Nix OS. I'm not quite there yet, but this is the Nix Package Manager. Stick with me, and let's check it out. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually go through installing Nix on Void and we're going to check out some of the packages. Now I've already installed it and I've been kind of messing around with it. I don't have anything too deep but um, and I'm not really familiar with it but let's just go ahead and fumble around a little bit and check it out shall we? So let's go ahead and launch a browser. I'll show you how I installed it. All I did was I actually just searched Nix Oops, not uh, ArchWiki. Nix on Void Linux. That's all I did. And then I saw right here this voidlinux.org news article from 2014. Now, this article, if we click on it, is going to show you and tell you that in this post, I'll explain how to use the Nix package manager, which is fully supported and ready to be used for all users in the void distribution. Now, this is from uh, January of 2014, so I don't know what their thoughts are on Nix right now. Um, if things have changed or not, um, but it was still in the repo, so it was actually pretty easy to install and get going. So I'm assuming they still support it well, and that they still are, uh, it's still safe to use on Void Linux. So, but as is anything, when you're installing stuff on your system and following uh, YouTube videos, you know, just uh, do everything with, take everything with a grain of salt, and make sure you. Uh, kind of research things before you just blindly follow anybody including myself because hey let's face it uh, I don't know what I'm doing half the time so <laughs> thank you for following me anyway so let's just go ahead and I'll walk you through the steps on installing it because it is super simple so let's go ahead and launch a terminal here and we're already zoomed in all you're going to do is you're going to do sudo xbps dash install dash s nix and I've already got it installed so I'm not going to go through it again but um uh, that'll install it for you. Once you're done doing that, um, what's kind of funny, you can tell how old this is because it says the next step is to use systemctl start nix daemon. Well, uh, we all know that uh, void does not use uh, systemd. So the command you're going to need to do is you're just going to need to link it like any other service. You're going to do an ln, excuse me, a sudo ln dash s, and you're going to do slash etc slash sv slash nix daemon. And then you're going to put that into slash var slash service. So just like starting any other service on your system, you're going to start the next name in the same way. Once that's up and going, you have to go ahead and kill your terminal, or you can source your etc slash profile, whatever you want to do, but go ahead and kill your terminal, um, relaunch your terminal. Um, we're going to go ahead and zoom back in, sorry. Um, and then once you do that, you actually need to subscribe to a Nix channel. So what we're going to do is then you're going to do a Nix dash channel. And there's four or five that I could see. Um, I haven't dug too deep. But there was like four or five that I saw that you could um, do, but this is the one that it recommends in this article. So this is one we did, or the one I did, and that's the one we're going to show on the video. And you're just going to do dash dash add. And then you're going to do HTTPS colon slash slash nixos.org and then you do forward slash channels forward slash channels excuse me and then slash nixpkgs dash unstable and then you're going to hit enter and that is going to subscribe to the channel and then once you get that done, I guess I didn't need to go all the way back, you're going to run a nix-channel, and you're going to do dash dash update, and that is going to sync everything up, and you're going to be all set to use nix on your system. Now, there might be some other configuration and stuff you can do. I personally haven't gotten that far into it yet. I'm still kind of playing around, um, but uh, this is really great. Um, I'm really thoroughly enjoying having it on here. It's kind of cool. You know, Void is a great distribution. You all know how much I love it already. Um, the package management system uh, in XBPS is, a, is just amazing, but it seems to be the biggest, the biggest hang-up for people is there's certain packages in there that people are missing um, that they just feel they can't live without and um, not having it in the main repo or a void source package for it or whatever has turned some people off to void. Well, this is another alternative you have um, to be able to switch over to void Linux and still get the packages you need. Because once you install this, I'm going to show you probably the biggest one I get asked about um, program wise that isn't packaged for 
void in their main repository or in the source packages. It used to be in source packages, but it's not anymore. Um, I believe there's a few random templates floating around out there, but the, one of the biggest things. So we are going to actually do this, and this is how we search for a package. We're going to do nix-env, and then we're going to do dash q, and it's a lowercase q, lowercase a, capital P. And we're not looking for cool retro term. Sorry, that was what I was looking for before. So this right here, if I just enter this and hit enter, this is basically going to pull up all the packages in the unstable uh, channel of Nix Package Manager. And give it a second here because it's it's a lot of packages. But I mean, once you get that done, you can just scroll through and. Um, um, you can actually just page down and just scroll through all this stuff. Now that's going to take you forever. So you, what you can also do is you can do QAP and then whatever you're looking for, you just pipe that into grep. And then let's see here. I'll tell you the one thing that I've been asked probably more times than anything else as far as being available and how to install it on void. Um, I didn't install it this way because I didn't have Nix package manager on here at the time I installed it. Now, but I will be uninstalling it the way I have it because it's harder to maintain the way I have it than it is this way. And I'm going to be installing it through Nix. So you'd run Nix dash ENV and then dash QAP, pipe that into grep and look for Brave. Everybody wants the Brave browser. So if we look for Brave, it is going to go ahead and search the Nix packages. And it takes a couple seconds here because it is a pretty large thing that it's searching. But we can see right here, Nix packages dot Brave, Brave one dot five one dot one one zero so we have brave in the next packages you can install it keep it up to date everything through the next package manager which is just great just one of the few things that people have been on my case about asking about how to get it installed on uh, void um, i used a workaround using an xdeb package using um or use, excuse me using a dot deb package and using the xdeb uh tool but that's not the greatest way to do it. It's hard to keep things updated that way. This way is a lot better. I'm probably gonna uninstall Brave the way I have it and use this to install it. But basically, all you then have to do to install what you're looking for is do a nix-env, and then you're gonna do a dash i, capital A, give it those two flags, and then you are going to say whatever package you want to install. So it's really simple. So let's see here, what can we install that, um, might be interesting to look at. Let's go ahead and search for, um, let's see here. Let's see if there is, um, what kind of program do we wanna mess with? Um, let's do, golly, I don't know. I don't know what I want to install for this. I guess I should have been a little more prepared. Um, let's go ahead and try uh, Vivaldi. Uh, this seems to be a web browser that everybody likes. Let's just go ahead and check if Vivaldi's on there. Now, if it is, great. Let's see how it works. Um, if not, then we'll have to think of something else, I guess. Okay, Vivaldi's on there. Now, here's the deal. I want Vivaldi, I wanna check out Vivaldi, but I actually don't want to install it to my system. Um, so if I wanted to install it on my system, all I would have to do is do a nix-env-i capital A and then do nixpkgs.vivaldi. Now that would install it on my system right there. I would have Vivaldi installed, running the whole nine, I'd be good to go. But say I want to try out Vivaldi to make sure I want it. Well, how would I go about doing that, you say? Well, that's really cool, because Nix has this really cool thing called the Nix Shell. And the Nix Shell, what it does is it allows you to install things in a kind of a sandboxed way to where it doesn't affect your system, it's not permanently on your system, but you can still use it and check it out. So let me show you here. This is actually pretty cool. So if we do nix shell and do dash p and say Vivaldi and hit enter. Oh, what's what do we got here? Uh, Vivaldi and nix packages to temporary allow. Oh, so I need to um, export nix packages allow unfree. So I need to do some of that. So okay, let's not do that. So let's just do. Oh, here we'll just. I'll show you Brave here. So. Um, if I type in Brave in my normal browser or in my normal command line and hit enter, you can see I don't have it because I have to type in Brave browser and I have stable and I also have nightly. So I have to type in that whole thing. I don't just have Brave, right? So if I do the Nix packages shell dash P and I do Brave, watch what happens. It's gonna go ahead and take me into the Nix shell, right? Now, if I type Brave and hit enter, 
oh, well, look at that. I launched an instance of Brave, right? So if I then close out of here and I exit out of Nick shell and I type brave again, you can see it says it's not found because what it is is it built it inside that Nick shell in kind of that sandboxed way to where it is, it built it and it allowed me to launch it, but it doesn't really s install it on my system. And so now if I even go back into the Nick shell and hit enter and I try running brave and hit enter, you can see it still says command not found. But if I do the same thing again and I do nix dash shell dash p brave and hit enter it takes me back in there and then I can run brave again and you can see it's up and going it's really cool that you can do this you can try out programs um, let's actually try this let's do um, you can see I don't have uh, let's say lazy git or is it lazy dash git anyway I don't have that on my system, right? So let's do a nix shell dash p lazy git and hit enter. So now if I do lazy git, this isn't a git repository. No, I don't want to create a new one. So let's cd into scripts. So you can see now I'm in the nix shell, but I'm in my home.local scripts, which is a git repository. And if I do lazy git and hit enter you can see that i'm using lazy git now now if i exit out of that and i exit out of the shell and i try lazy git again you can see i don't have it and if i do nix shell dash p and i do lazy git you can see i don't have it either so basically what this does is it builds the program for you so you can actually try it out um, it runs it in a sandboxed way to where it's only in this shell and once you close out of that shell it's gone now i believe the binary stays built on your system somewhere so that way when you do this nick shell dash p and then your program again um, it'll actually it'll just instantly do it um, and then i believe if you actually install it after that it'll do the same thing but you can see it's just kind of a cool way to be able to test programs on Nick without with on Nix, excuse me, without actually um, installing them on your system right off the bat, and that way you're good to go. So let's go ahead and exit out of there. Now the interesting thing is, so let's go ahead and install something here. Um, so what do I want to install? Um, well, let's go ahead and install Brave just the regular way. So let's do Nix. Let's do nix env and we'll do dash ia and we'll do nix pkgs dot brave and hit enter. Now it's going to go ahead and install it. It was super quick because it's already been built on my system, just not completely installed. But what's interesting is, watch when I actually launch my program launcher where all my binaries go to. You might have seen it before on other videos. If I launch, if I do mod shift and then I do D for my launcher menu. You can see if I do alacrity down here in the corner, you can see I've got this little menu that pops up. And I can do Brave, and I have Brave, Brave Browser Stable, and Brave Browser Nightly, and I can go ahead and launch any one of those. So now I can launch Brave this way, and it's good to go, and I can just have all my programs. now. What I want to show you is when you install this, it doesn't put these in the normal location um, of your binaries. Like if I actually cd into scripts and I vim into launch.sh and hit enter, my main, let's do a space n to get rid of that. You can see my main directory is our user slash bin and slash bin. That's where all my binaries are, where I launched my programs from. I had to add a third directory to actually get the Nix packages to show up in my uh, launch menu. And that is in my home.nix profile slash bin. So let's actually go to workspace three. We're gonna launch another terminal. We're gonna clear the screen. We're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna run Ranger. Now we're gonna go down here to Nix profile and we're gonna go into Nix profile and in bin, you can see I've got Brave, cool retro term. I have X term and I have Libre Wolf. Libre Wolf is another one that is not available in the void source packages or in the void repository. Well, it might be in the void source packages. I'm not positive. I haven't looked for it yet. Well, let's just check. Um, Libre Wolf. 
nope, it's not even in the void source packages. So um, this is a way you can get LibreWolf installed on your system by using Nix. But you can see it stores all of your binaries here in your home user dot Nix profile slash bin. And I have Brave, Cool Retro Term, LibreWolf, and uh, Xterm. Now I had to add this to my menu launcher to actually get it to list all the menus, but it does so it doesn't store things in the normal location. So um, I added that in and I now have um, those packages available to be launched uh, from my menu and they are all installed on my system and they're good to go. So as you can see, the uh, Nix package manager is actually another great tool you can use to just make void a little bit better than it already is, which is very difficult to do if I do say so myself. So if there's anything else um, that I come across with on this Nix package manager, I will definitely put out another video. Um, I definitely recommend you check it out if you are using Void Linux and you're looking for a way to get stuff installed that um, may be a little bit more difficult to install or to locate. Um, it is definitely a good tool to have and a good tool to use. Um, it's pretty cool. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to actually dig into Nix OS now too, just to kind of check that out. But that's what we got going on right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you got a little bit of uh, knowledge out of this. And go ahead and go check out Nick's Package Manager if you haven't because it's really cool. So that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, great rest of your weekend. Stay safe. God bless.